What's this? Is it, is it, is it Zen 3 launch day? Why, yes it is. And I happen to have the 5950X and the 5600X here for testing. Well, these are, these are boxes. The processors are, uh, of course, kicking around. But today we're going to be taking a look at these two CPUs, which are vastly different ends uh, of the price spectrum, but this time around AMD kind of did the sampling a little differently. Um, you know, some reviewers got only one processor, some got two, some outlets got uh, the full entire stack. Um, for me, I got the 5600X and the 5950X, so that should give us a pretty good picture of um, sort of like the top and bottom end of the SKUs. They're very happy to get the 16 core uh, 5950X this time around. Last time I had to wait for like the second um, sampling round and all that, but I'm not going to bore you with those details. Today we're going to be taking a look at these two processors, and I will also be testing the i9-10900K CPU, and yeah, that's just basically what I have available for testing, so that's what we're going to be doing here in this video. Gaming benchmarks, a couple synthetics as well to throw in there, but mainly we will be focusing on gaming performance. Did you just finish building a sweet gaming rig only to have this happen to you? Not to worry because your CD key has you covered with Windows 10 Pro licenses for under $18. And if you head over there right now, you could save 20% off with my code JPD20 at checkout. You receive your key within seconds and then just click the start button and type activate to find the Windows activation screen. And all you gotta do then is paste your code in. For more info as well as that coupon code, be sure to check out the links down in the description below. So before we get into the gaming performance, I do quickly want to go over the test setups that I was using here for the benchmarks in this video. For both of the Ryzen processors that I have, the 5600X and 5950X, I was using the same build which had an ASRock X570 Tai Chi motherboard on the latest BIOS, of course, along with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory at 3200 megahertz. And I was using a PCIe Gen 4 2 terabyte NVMe SSD from Gigabyte. And both test systems were using the RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition graphics card on the 457.0. 09 driver. For the Intel system, I was using a Gigabyte Aorus Master motherboard along with the 10900K, but otherwise these specs were the same. I used the same RAM, I used the same exact graphics card and all of that, so no variance there between one system or another as far as, you know, for gaming benchmarks, try to get it as close as possible. Um, you know, I, I don't think there, I'm not sure if there is an as ASRock Tai Chi motherboard for Intel, but would have loved to have kept the board the same, but I tried to keep everything as close as possible. Uh, but it was an Aorus master board. So these are both pretty high-end uh, comparable boards, obviously one for Intel, one for AMD. Um, so with the test setup out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about some synthetic tests, and then we will get into those gaming benchmarks. First up, I've got Cinebench R20, the latest version of that. And on the single threaded performance, we can see that for the first generation, AMD has, well, not all, well, not that they've lied in the past, but they've lived up to their promise and actually delivered here um, with single threaded performance that is actually beating Intel. Today is the day that AMD can officially claim that they are the kings of single threaded performance with the 5950X coming in at a score of 642, um, which AMD claimed during their uh, announcement that it was the first C CPU to get a score over 600 uh, on the single core. And that was the case here as well. And all this was done uh, at stock settings. The 5600X was a bit slower at 603, while the 10900K did round out that list there at 536. When it comes to multi-threaded, even though, you know, the Ryzen CPUs are fast on single-threaded, this is mostly going to come down uh, to core count, so these scores really shouldn't surprise you uh, too much to see that Intel is obviously above the 5600X, being that it's a 10-core CPU versus a 6-core, uh, but the 5950X with its 16 cores, 32 threads, comes out at the top with 10,103, 5600X at 4524, and the 10900K at 6321. I also did run single threaded and multi threaded tests on Geekbench, which the 5950X was at the top four on single threaded tests with 1662, 5600X was right in the middle at 1564, and 10900K at 1476. On the multi threaded side of things, once again, the 5960X or 5950X, sorry is at the top with 15744, 5600X is at the bottom with 8693, and 10900K comes in the middle of the pack at 11002. 
So yeah, nothing really too surprising there. AMD promised faster single-threaded performance, faster than Intel, faster than the previous generation, and they delivered on that in spades. And of course, with multi-threaded stuff, it's just really going to be based uh, on core count. You could have took a 3000 series uh, AMD CPU with more cores and tested it against an Intel CPU with less cores, and it's going to win there. Uh, really, the big story there was the single-threaded performance where AMD has made a huge leap, uh, actually, you know, jumping over Intel, not, not by a little bit here, but I'm considerably coming in faster than Intel on single-threaded performance. So obviously the question is, did it work out for them in terms of gaming performance? So we will go ahead and take a look at those numbers. Now, all of the games were tested at 1080p on the Ultra preset um, using the RTX 2080 Ti. As I said, we're using only 1080p here because we're really trying to identify a uh, possible CPU limitation and eliminate the possibility uh, of a GPU bottleneck getting in the way here as these are benchmarks on CPUs. Um, not on graphics cards. So we're not looking for a graphics card limitation. We're not looking to max everything out here at 4K or 8K to see what the GPU can do. We want to know what the CPU can do and the most frames will be the winner. And here you can see in most of the titles, the 10900K does still pull out ahead, but the gap has definitely been closed considerably uh, based what we saw in previous generations of testing. In Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the 5950X was 97 average versus 98 on the 5600X, so that's within the margin of error. And then the 10900K was 101 average frames per second. So that is a very CPU demanding title, and you know, that's kind of basically a wash, although, the, you know, re retesting it, it is recreatable, and the 10900K was just ever so slightly faster. Um, then the Ryzen CPUs, the 5600X here being marginally faster than the 5950X. So, you know, really what this graph should tell you more than anything is even though, you know, we can kind of see the 10900K is uh, just edging out um, these processors, you know, it's really not going to be a limitation if you go with one of the Ryzen CPUs, something like the 5600X, which is going to be $300, depending on price on availability and all that. 5900X, uh, 5950X, sorry, is going to be going to set you back over $700. 10900K is going to be in the middle around $500. Um, so really, as far as value for performance, the 5600X is looking like the most compelling option, as it's actually even better than the 5950X here in some of these games, which don't seem to um, want the extra cores as much, but seem to be working better on a 6-core, 12-threaded uh, CPU. I'd like to see the Ryzen 7 numbers on this as well for the 5800X, but sadly I did not have one of those available for testing as AMD did not sample me one here uh, in the first round, but there's a possibility uh, I could get one in the future. But going across here, you could see that Intel is winning in pretty much every game apart from Red Dead Redemption 2, which seemed to really favor the 5950X. That game seems to really like the extra cores and threads that the 16-core CPU was able to give it. And when we come to the 1% lows, nothing really changing here. Graphs looking very similar, um, you know, to scale across the board. Obviously, the numbers are going to be lower um, as these are kind of close to what you would see minimum frame rate wise, although it's based on the 1% average of all frame times captured during the benchmark run. Um, but those are the 1% lows there if you guys want to go ahead and look those over. So overall takeaway from the gaming performance side of things, these are all very, you know, solid processors. You're going to be able to play pretty much anything that comes out. You're not going to find yourself, uh, you know, CPU limited, even if you were to grab something like the 5950X and throw it in with an RTX 3090. Um, you're going to be absolutely fine, but you really shouldn't be doing that uh, unless you do need to have the extra cores for doing, you know, things like Photoshop, video editing, Blender, what have you. Um, if you can take advantage of those extra uh, cores and threads on the Ryzen 9 CPU, that it's going to have more than something like the 1000K or the Ryzen 5, um, then, you know, by all means, then that should be your purchase decision. You should be, if, it's, if you're using it primarily for business, you should go after those extra cores. However, really the winner here uh, for me, even though, you know, it's at the bottom of, you know, multi-threaded tests and stuff like that, as far as performance per dollar is going to be the Ryzen 5 3600X. You can get one for $200 cheaper 
than a 10900K and it's going to hang right in there in terms of gaming performance. Again, this is at 1080p with a high-end graphics card. If you start to ramp up resolution to something like 1440p, which is becoming even more and more common, and then you pair that with something like a 3070, you're gonna be absolutely aces or you know one of the upcoming 6800 graphics cards, you're gonna be absolutely fine here. Uh, $300 for it, very, very good value, honestly. And they can hang right in there now uh, with Intel and depending on the game, they might even win faster in single threaded, but it didn't really seem to help them out too much uh, in terms of gaming benchmarks. We'll have to see what future optimizations can bring to the table there um, with these CPUs as these are, or basically this architecture is going to be in the next generation of consoles. Uh, we could see further optimizations in newer titles coming out. So that's another reason to maybe consider going with Zen over the Intel side of things. It's really going to come down to a lot of your budget, you know, which side, do you, if you like one side more, or the other and then also AMD does have the PCIe Gen 4 support so they are beating Intel right now in terms of features and you know pricing and availability is really going to you know we have to wait and see on that I can't really talk to that right now uh, as of the time of recording this the processors aren't actually available uh, for anyone to purchase so we'll have to really wait and see on that but if any if it the same thing happens like we saw with the recent Nvidia launch then you might have a hard time finding um, these CPUs initially as soon as they come out so game performance very solid on these Ryzen CPUs um, as far as I'm concerned you know based on what AMD said in their initial press conference they delivered on those promises so no shenanigans there and very compelling product I would definitely say pick up either one of these based on your needs if you need the extra cores and threads go with Ryzen 9. If you want just gaming performance and you don't really need those extra cores and threads, you are not really losing anything by going with the Ryzen 5 uh, 5600X, very solid CPU. And Intel's also good as well. Both sides are good. There's really no reason to not buy one or the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and get on out of here, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video or found it informative in any way. If you did, leave a thumbs up on it, subscribe if you're not already, and I will catch you guys next time for another video.